Some of you are going to love the music in this video, and some of you are going to think we are insane for featuring it at all. And that's perfectly fine by me because frankly, I don't like all of it either. Encountering unpleasant musical experiences is just one of the many benefits of running a website called Make Weird Music. <laughs> and it's encouraged some music submissions that are just way too weird for me to even enjoy. So I guess the lesson is, be careful what you name your website. <laughs> anyway, back in May 2021, Coulter asked the Make Weird Music Facebook community to submit the weirdest, most out there music they've ever heard. And wow, did you all share some strange stuff. The results were too fun to keep to ourselves, so Coulter and I are going to walk through some of it. And we'll share our thoughts and reactions to this uh, music. <laughs> now, to begin with, there's a lot of this unsurprising stuff that I'm just going to breeze over, like King Crimson, Pink Floyd, blah, 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 a whole bunch of other music we've already featured on the site or made videos about. And besides, that's all tame compared to what else is on this list. The most popular submission was Captain Beefheart's Trout Mask Replica, with at least 16 mentions. Now, I'll agree that this is a very strange album and was extremely groundbreaking when it came out, but so much has been said about this record by music journalists through the decades that I'm not going to cover it here. If you haven't heard it, check it out, because it's definitely a masterpiece in the world of weird music. The second most popular submission, with 13 mentions, was The Shags. The story of The Shags, if you're not familiar, is that these three sisters from rural New Hampshire, Dot, Helen, and Betty Wigan, were basically forced by their father Austin Wigan to start a band because he had received a palm reading from his mother saying that, among other things, his girls would be in a band. So he did what any good parent would, he pulled them out of school and made them practice every day. But no one around them seemed to have an ear for pitch or rhythmic accuracy, so the resulting sound is unique. You could say they set their own parameters for quality. Oh, the rich people want what the poor people got. And the poor people want what the rich people got. And the skinny people want what the fat people got. And the fat people want what the skinny people got. The Shags were essentially terrible, but what set them apart from hundreds of other terrible bands is that they kept practicing relentlessly and were never told that what they were doing was terrible. For lovers of the avant-garde, the Shags are paragons of musical innocence. To anyone compelled to seek out new musical frontiers, to distrust genre labels, or to defy all boundaries, the Shags present a, a peek into an alternate universe where the musical laws are entirely different. The third most popular submission, with 12 mentions, was Sleepy Time Gorilla Museum, who I've only talked about once or twice over the years. I did just recently discuss them with Tony Levin. Well, that band, uh, uh, Sleepy Time Gorilla Museum, I am definitely a fan of the band. I'm not sure what they're doing now or whether they're, they're together, but uh, it just happened that Stickman was opening for them in Texas somewhere, or they were opening for us. I don't really remember. I didn't know them, and I was, of course, you know, I'm a fan of music. I mm -hmm. was struck by the musicality and the and the radicality of that band, and. Uh, so I became a fan and I got all their material. Sleepy Time Gorilla Museum was around between 1999 and 2011. They released three studio albums and I'd say they're like a darker, more theatrical Mr. Bungle. If you want to learn more about them, I highly encourage you to read the Wikipedia page because even that is absurd and surreal. Now their music is very technical and every band member played at least six instruments many of which were custom made or were some form of rare antiquity they include the sledgehammer dulcimer the wheel the stro violin the tangularium and the electric pancreas One-off submission someone mentioned that I just loved was Taylor Brooks' Virtutes Occulte, Microtonal Music for Six Pianos. This one really caught me off guard, and it's brilliant. Now, Taylor Brooks is a composer who writes concert stage music, electronic music, music for robotic instruments, as well as music for video theater and dance. Now, unlike a lot of microtonal music, this is actually peaceful 
and disturbing at the same time. <laughs> it's worth several re-listens and is actually quite beautiful. You can download the entire 738 page score via a link in his YouTube video. The score explains the tuning of each piano and he says it's an extension of Harry Parch's conception of overtonality. Now I don't know what that means, but I highly recommend you take a listen to this release. Another high charter was Throbbing Gristle. I was not previously very familiar with them prior to making this video, so I come to you now as a throbbing gristle neophyte turned evangelist. And what can I tell you but, oh my god, it's like discovering the lost city of Atlantis. Throbbing gristle is patient zero for so much. Marilyn Manson, Nine Inch Nails, Ministry, and basically the entire industrial music genre, but ironically they don't sound quite like any of that. What they sound like is a broken synthesizer sitting next to a malfunctioning tape machine. Their music is very much a textural, unstructured oral landscape that blurs the lines between tonal harmony and music concrete. And it doesn't get much weirder than the personal lives of Gristle co-founders Genesis P. Orridge and Cozy Fanny Tutti. Do a search on YouTube on Other Like Me for a brief glimpse into the exceedingly far out lives of these two deviant artistic geniuses. Thank you, Coulter, and thank you to the Make Weird Music community for sharing such great stuff. We're really hoping to turn this into a regular series because there's no limit to the amount of weird music out there. So if you've got some recommendations, drop them in the comments. Otherwise, we've got about 10 more videos to make just based on what we got from this one social media post. So keep them coming and let us know if you check out anything that we've mentioned so far. And I know I don't normally ask this, but if you could hit the like button on this video, I just want to get the word out about the weird artists that we're going to be talking about in this series. So I'd appreciate it. Thanks.